What's going on, everyone? So Cam Reddish, he is a perfect complement for what the Lakers need, right? Sizable wing, 3 and D, hasn't really gotten a fair opportunity, and a guy that could really come in and help, uh, you know, alleviate some of the stress and burden uh, and really kind of lift our defense. Now, he's not a guy that's going to come in and all of a sudden we're going to be a contender. He's not a guy that's going to come in and all of a sudden change the tides of the Lakers. But he is a piece that could be a beginning piece to really helping in the right direction for the Lakers, right? He's a guy, sizable wing. He's also very young and can be a piece not only for now, but the future. Given like the circumstances he's been in with Atlanta and the Knicks, he probably won't cost a ton to extend in the future. He has He's a clutch client, so that helps. So we got a, a leg up and an advantage in that regard. And the New York Knicks seem really determined to try to trade him. Uh, we also got reports that the Lakers are interested in Cam Reddish as well as Evan Fournier. So exactly what was said is the Lakers have discussed trades with the Pistons and Knicks for Boyan Bogdanovich, Cam Reddish, and Evan Fournier per Shams. Uh, so the Lakers, obviously, we know the whole Boyan Bogdanovich information. I did a video diving into that. Lakers actually put in an offer for Boyan so far. It hasn't been accepted. Uh, we'll see what the development front on that is. Uh, now, as far as Cam Reddish and Evan Fournier, that is something that I think is a real potential and could be very cheap, right? So the Knicks want to unload Cam Reddish, uh, but they want teams to get to take on Evan Fournier. So the Lakers' good thing is is wouldn't have to give up a lot to get these two. You probably are giving up a second round pick because you're taking on Evan Fournier's long term salary. There was also this deal of Russell Westbrook to the Knicks for Julius Randle, Evan Fournier, and Cam Reddish uh, with no first round picks involved. And if that's a possibility, it kind of it becomes one of those things like, do the Lakers do it now? I my concern is is fit. Julius Randle has been playing great basketball lately. He has been just on fire lately. Uh, but what is his production as like the third or fourth option on the Lakers, right? Especially if they do this deal and then go do like a Boyan Bogdanovich or something like that. Does Julius Randle have the same production, right? And how does he play next to Anthony Davis, who is going to be the number one option? Can Julius Randle continue his hot streaks? Evan Fournier has had a terrible year. Uh, and he's completely fallen out of the rotation for the Knicks. So it, they have his long-term salary, which is why they want to unload him. But Evan Fournier is a career 38% three-point shooter. Uh, he's not a great 3 and D guy, but he's serviceable enough. He's He's been a solid defender for most of his career. Not like a lockdown defender or anything like that. But he's a guy that's got some decent size, that can shoot the ball, can do a little bit of things, uh, and would just be a bench guy, right? He's, he's probably not starting. He's probably a guy coming off the bench to provide some scoring and provide some shooting. Cam Reddish, uh, he's just a sizable wing that can play both forward spots and really give us some production, right? Even in, like, the, the circumstance that he's in with the Knicks of just, like, inconsistent play, Tibbs not wanting him, the team not really wanting him, and, and Tibbs never even wanted the, the Knicks to trade for him to begin with, uh, he's still averaging about 10 points a game, right? So what does he do in a consistent role, a carved out role, uh, where, you know, nightly he's given us 15, you know, 15 minutes a game. I think he can realistically be a, a 10 to 15 point a game guy. He's got the skill set. He's got the athleticism. He's got the size. He's got all the intangibles. He is a already a pretty solid defender, uh, but I think with Darvin Ham, with the Lakers, I really think that he could come in and be even a better defender. Uh, I mean, look at what Darvin Ham was able to do with Russell Westbrook, right? Now, if he could do that with a 6'8 wing and Cam Reddish, he could be great for us and for the future. And he's a guy that had so much promise, so much upside, still only 22 years old. And regardless... When you're in a situation that is just toxic and turmoil and a, and a organization doesn't want, your head coach doesn't even want you there before you were even brought to the team. It's not like Cam Reddish went to the Knicks and Tibbs just didn't like him. Tibbs didn't want him to begin with, and Cam Reddish knew this. That's why the, the Knicks almost traded him to the Lakers last season, like two weeks or whatever after they traded for him, right? So I imagine that that's not the best situation for Cam Reddish. And then to go from that to a team that actually does want you, actually does see you as a piece for now in the future, as willing to give you a chance and an opportunity and actual role, you can see a player kind of changing his tune and, and being a completely different player for the team that wants him. You know, we all want to be wanted. We all want to be liked, especially in our workplace. So I imagine Cam Reddish would have better production. 
I just concerned about the overall fit. Look, if the Lakers are going to go and trade for Boyan Bogdanovich, there's your cap space, right? So at that point, you might as well do whatever trade you can to put the best team for now and the next few years. And you can maybe make an argument that this deal would be a solid deal, especially if you're not giving up any firsts, because then you could go and maybe do the first for Boyan Bogdanovich. Uh, so you could probably, you could have like a starting five, like have LeBron play point guard as much as he doesn't want to play point guard. He's going to have to play point guard. But you have like LeBron, you could have like Walker, uh, Boyan, Randall, and Davis. That's a pretty good starting five, right? You got some good versatility, some good flexibility. You got switchability. You got size. Like Julius Randle's big. Anthony Davis is big. Boyan Bogdanovich is big. LeBron James is big. And then, so Walker would be your smallest player. So you go from a team that's like all guards to a team that's like primarily forwards, which is a good scenario, right? And, you know, probably could be a better defender, uh, defensive team. You'd still have Cam Reddish, Evan Fournier, Austin Reeves, you know, Thomas Bryant, guys like that coming off the bench. Uh, But if the Lakers were to get, even if they don't get Julius Randle, if they just got Evan Fournier and Cam Reddish, I I wouldn't be against it at all. Um, The problem is, is that if they do that, then you're probably not getting Boyan Bogdanovich, right? So that just comes down to like a bidding war. If the Lakers really do have like, stiff competition, then they're probably not getting Boyan Bogdanovich regardless. Now, ideally, you get Cam Reddish and Boyan, and you're in a great spot, right? Like, there was the reports that Cam Reddish, uh, that the Knicks wanted a second-round pick. If that's true and you could do that, then great, go do that. But there's a couple factors that we don't know. Are they willing to give uh, up Cam Reddish for a second-round pick if you take Evan Fournier, which the original report said that they wanted to use Cam Reddish as, like, a as bait? for a team to take Evan Fournier, if that's the case, then it's hard because now you have to match salaries, which means, you know, you're basically giving up Kendrick Nunn and Patrick Beverly and a second to get Bay and Fournier. And if that's the case, then now you can't get uh, Boyan Bogdanovich unless it's a Russell Westbrook trade. So maybe you do the Knicks trade and you do the Pistons trade, like, right? So maybe you get Cam Reddish, Evan Fournier, and then you go do like Russell Westbrook for like Boyan Bogdanovich, Alec Burke, and you know, maybe Sadiq Bey, and you give up a first. And now you just got like five new players that come to the team. You got two young guys in Sadiq Bey and Cam Reddish that you can have for the future. You get Boyan Bogdanovich, you get Evan Fournier, you get uh, Alec Burke, three guys that are solid rotation guys right now that can shoot the ball, play some defense, all of that stuff. Like, that's a real possibility. Maybe they work some out, or maybe they work out some like three team deal uh, in the mix. I, I think that that's something that could happen as well. Um, but it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see what the Lakers end up doing. The good thing is, is they have options, right? The good thing is, is that there's there's options that are starting to come on the horizon here. Um, now, obviously, the fifteenth, three days away, we're right around the corner, or at least at the time of recording this video. Um, depending on when you're watching this video, it might already be here. Uh, so. At the time of recording this video, we still got three days before, you know, a a lot of guys become available. So I imagine if anything is going to get done, probably gets done around the 15th or, you know, towards the weekend around that time would be my guess. Uh, And if they can somehow manage to get Boyan Bogdanovich, that'd be perfect. I'm not really big on trading uh, an unprotected first for Boyan Bogdanovich just because one, his age, two, like he's not a piece that he's a piece that makes us much better. Absolutely. No doubt about it. He makes us better. But he doesn't put us in contention. As much as we would like him to, he doesn't. You know, again, I've said it from day one. Lakers make the playoffs. I will take my chances against any team in the league. But if you're going to give up that first, you got it's got to be justifiable. And it's not even just about going and getting Boyan Bogdan. It's about other trades as well. If you get fleeced by the Pistons, any fair good trade now just got thrown out the window because every team is going to look at it as like, well, the Lakers, you just got, you've gotten fleeced in the the Pistons deal and you want what? You want us to, to just give you what you want? Like clearly you show that if you want something, you're willing to pay for it regardless. So that's another factor that you got to keep in mind as well when you're talking about the Boyan Bogdanovich trade. Ideally, if we could figure out a way to get these two guys, um, I'm all for it. Like, let's say they don't want to give up um, Sadiq Bey, right? And they want the unprotected first. Maybe they take on Fournier, right? If they would take on Evan Fournier for an unprotected first, maybe the Lakers could, 
you know, swap out, uh, you know, so where the the Pistons would get Evan Fournier, the Knicks get Reddish and, or sorry, the Knicks get uh, Beverly and Nunn, and then we get Boyan and, uh, and uh, uh, Cam Reddish. Cool. I would be all for that. Give up an unprotected first. Cool. I'd be all for that. Knicks get what they want. Lakers get, like, it'd be a win-win for everybody. Maybe I'll even dive into that in, like, a separate video, because that's not a bad video um, for itself. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Think that uh, the Lakers should should pony up and go get uh, Boyan Bogdanovich? Do you think that they should trade and go get uh, Evan Fournier and Cam Reddish? What are your thoughts? What are your opinions? However you feel, good, bad, ugly, somewhere in between. I'd let I'd love to hear them. Let me know down in the comments below.